Thank you, Constantine. I shall talk about the gas industry in Russia, and I'll talk about the relationship between Russia and Europe. But I would like to speak about a wider context. I would like to talk about art and innovation as well, because I believe that the possibility to use and uh, deploy new technologies uh, and to complete such technologies and to enhance them uh, is uh, what is changing uh, the gas market uh, just uh, um, before our eyes. Here you can see the result of this uh, ongoing improvement uh, in uh, this uh, sector. This is indeed is the enhancement in the output uh, of one single rig of one well in the US, a new well in the US. Because uh, in the US, uh, the shale gas or the shale oil revolution um, has come to the fore. This is truly a revolution because it involves new and innovative technologies. Now, if you look at uh, uh, this development in yield and productivity, the first thing that the first thing that mm, you realize as an economist uh, and uh, as the ordinary citizen or the ordinary uh, person involved in the industry is uh, that with such a growth, uh, you should also uh, see a reduce a reduction in costs because usually the two things go hands in hands in hand. <coughs> Well, usually the revolution, the shale gas revolution, allowed for a revision of our concepts. In this slide, you see the dynamic of uh, shale gas production in the U.S. One of the most important indicator is given by the name of the rigs, the name of the uh, extraction of the oil rig. So you see that uh, you had an increase in the production even when in a great number of uh, rigs or wells were closed. How was that possible? It got, was possible because of the technological revolution. Now if we look at the future, we can easily say that thanks to the ongoing cost reduction as connected to the shale gas extraction in the US, we are expecting uh, uh, that the American um, producers will reach a greater efficiency. In 2011-2014, uh, um, the U.S. had uh, struck a, a record because they increased uh, the oil extraction uh, by one billion uh, barrel per day, which has, was quite unparalleled. Uh, you see that with the uh, extraction, there has been uh, a decline and it fluctuates now um, with a narrow range. You would have to be aware of the fact that the prices at the end are going to be slightly higher uh, and uh, extract and when the prices go up basic extraction will will go up again in this slide you see the changes that occurred on the market resulting from the uh, new technologies only one year ago in 2014 We thought that uh, oil price couldn't go below $50 uh, dollar per barrel, otherwise uh, the um, world would have met an uh, insufficient uh, supply. But as a matter of fact, we now see that this slope has shifted so that now we believe that 40 barrel would be more than enough uh, 40 dollars per barrel would be uh, all right now looking at the market today i believe that we should uh, understand that as long as uh, the effects of uh, the investment reduction be perceived away from the us market 
all fluctuations concerning the oil price will have repercussions on the amount extracted. Let's now move on and look at what happens in Russia. What is the repercussion of oil fl price fluctuations in Russia? It could be a paradox, uh, but the extraction is growing importantly in Russia if compared uh, to the previous year. Last year, the increase was a 3.2%, whereas over the past 10 months of 2016, it grew already. It is now um, higher than last year. Now, I'm not going to dwell on such figures any longer. I want to say that the tax system in Russia is such that oil companies Russian oil companies are um, not very sensitive to the fluctuations of oil price. In that e extraction companies are paid $20, $30 per barrel, irrespective of the fluctuations of oil price on the market. So the extraction uh, is, um, is carried out at very good levels. If we go back to this chart, you may see that Russia is one of the countries uh, with uh, extracting at a very uh, a reasonable cost. And uh, um, oil deposits in Russia are such as mm, to keep the extraction level unchanged for the next 20 years. If we go back to what Mr. Sechin said with reference to the role being played by Russia in terms of um, oil supply to Europe, well, I can say that in foreseeable future, there are certainly good prospect perspectives. In the case of gas, the situation is pretty similar. Here, there's a chart showing the increase of shale gas in the U.S., whereas on the right-hand side, you see another slope referring to the amount of resources availability as a function of the price in the future. The influence of natural gas is going to increase because the world is now entering into a new phase, <clears throat> a phase of LNG, um, liquefied natural gas, LNG. is what established a new contact between markets that were divided, the US, Asian, and European markets. Liquefied natural gas, LNG, will uh, uh, foster competition. Let me say a few closing remarks on the uh, dynamics underway in Russia. In this case, there are two opposing trends. In the higher part of the slide, we are showing that the largest company, Gazprom, in Russia, is reducing its uh, extraction rates, whereas uh, uh, here you can see that independent companies, the young companies, are increasing uh, the amount being extracted. I'd like to draw your attention on the fact that not only are we seeing a reduction in the amount of gas being extracted, but also in the amount of gas being consumed. Uh, the share of Gazprom had reduced uh, was already had already been reduced last year because independent producers are increasing the extraction. Russia requires new markets. It has to export. Uh, um, its gas because it has the largest deposits worldwide and we cannot just resort to the internal market because the official forecast as tabled by uh, the um, Russian government are not anticipating a national consumption increase uh, in terms of consumption. 
gas uh, is already one of the most important um, energy source in Russia. There are important deposits and that gas has to be exported. We strongly believe that the European market is going to be uh, most attractive uh, for uh, Russian gas producers. Whereas Russian gas is going to be a very important source of energy for Europeans. We've been, we're now used to hearing about um, the problems that we had to come to terms with in the past and the problems with, with the consumers in Europe and the producers in Russia. But I believe that uh, the politics has a very little room for maneuver because uh, we now have different uh, um, companies extracting gas, so much so that in Europe we're going to witness a strong uh, competition um, between American and Russian gas producers. And I believe that uh, uh, Europe's concern on uh, the political dependence of Europe on Russia is going to um, dwindle. I believe that uh, the uh, gas market looks very much like the oil market, and increasingly so. Indeed, there are economic factors at play that generate the same competition as we have with oil. And I believe that gas and oil coming from Russia certainly will meet with very good um, possibilities to be competitive. Uh, um, Russian gas and the Russian oil are not that expensive. They can be very competitive. In case of an increase of consumption of LNG, Europe will uh, go on importing large quantities of LNG from Russia. And Russia wishes to diversify its um, export market. It will be exporting LNG. It will build new um, pipelines towards the rest of Asia. And uh, as you can see in this slide, Europe will be the um, consume the most important clients uh, uh, for Russian uh, gas producers. So we are certainly going to see a greater cooperation between Europe and Russia. Uh, Russia can play an important role in Europe in terms of energy supplier. And the uh, share of uh, Russia's contributions won't be subject to political pressures. I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you for the considerations made on the uh, national market. Uh, in, unlike Verona uh, in uh, Russia, um, we don't have a lot of gas-powered vehicles. Now, with reference to competition, it would be very interesting indeed to see that growing competition. But when we heard about the gas coming from Malkata, the very same considerations were made. Now that we have uh, uh, liquefied natural gas, so we could expect the situation to um, be better. But you mentioned innovation. And that is interesting because whenever com innovation is referred to, uh, usually they always refer to wind or solar energy rather than to hydrocarbons. But the innovation can be introduced also in the hydrocarbon industry. We are referring to the year 2020. What do you think the energy balance is going to be uh, in 2020 in the decade or so uh, in Europe? Why is there such a um, concern about the dependence on uh, Russian uh, oil or gas? Well, I believe that the physical infrastructure is changing in the European gas market, and uh, this basically 
helps us uh, in establishing new ties uh, between Europe and Russia. When the gas from Qatar uh, was made available, something completely different was happened. You know that LNG is uh, growing importantly. Um, regasification um, facilities are being planned, and uh, this is a buffer uh, that is going to change the situation importantly. We should all understand that these projects cost a lot of money. And all these infrastructures uh, also account for a problem for Russia. All this potential can be used. Nobody obviously anticipates any growth in the oil consumption. It'll be export which is going to be growing. And there's going to be part of the facilities that won't be used. Uh, that will depend on uh, political choices. As to forecast, uh, we have a global forecast, not just for Europe, and that forecast uh, includes uh, the future up until 2035. The previous analysis showed uh, that by 2035, notwithstanding effort to avoid uh, climate change, Traditional uh, energy sources such as uh, gas, oil, and coal will still be the core uh, for um, to meet the uh, energy needs. And uh, this is something that we have to consider thinking about the technology to be developed. There are revolutionary technologies uh, available or uh, in the offing. But uh, as long as uh, um, energy is not accumulated, um, the renewable energy cannot be accumulated, well, we won't be relying on it uh, because we cannot just rely on solar or wind energy. I could think at length about other industries such as transportation. So the world still needs non-renewable uh, energy sources. In the past, a theory prevailed of the oil peak to refer to the fact that there would be a time when the deficit would have been encountered. But this pattern has been uh, cancelled because now there's a problem in terms of peak of consumption that may be arrived at. Probably something that might happen over the past two de over the next two decades. <laughs> 